Welcome to Dark Dreams. The moon is full and it is dripping with blood. Now comes Blood Moon Rising magazine. Original fiction. Creature features. Nightmarish artwork. Interviews and other original horror. Visit BloodMoonRisingMagazine.com and join our Rising Legion. Godzilla's 12-Step Program by Joe R. Lansdale 1. Honest Work Godzilla, on his way to work at the foundry, sees a large building that seems to be mostly made of shiny copper and dark, reflecting solar glass. He sees his image in the glass and thinks of the old days, wonders what it would be like to stomp on the building, to blow flames at it, kiss the windows black with his burning breath, then dance rapturously in the smoking debris. One day at a time, he tells himself, one day at a time. Godzilla makes himself look at the building hard. He passes it by. He goes to the foundry. He puts on his hard hat. He blows his fiery breath into the great vat full of used car parts, turns the car parts to molten metal. The metal runs through pipes and into new molds for new car parts, doors, roofs, etc. Godzilla feels some of the tension drain out. 2. Recreation. After work, Godzilla stays away from downtown. He feels tense. To stop blowing flames after work is difficult. He goes over to the Big Monster Recreation Center. Gorgo is there, drunk from oily seawater as usual. Gorgo talks about the old days. She's like that. Always the old days. They go out back and use their breath on the debris that is deposited there daily for the center's use. Kong is out back, drunk as a monkey. He's playing with Barbie dolls. He does that all the time. Finally, he puts the Barbies away in his coat pocket, takes hold of his walker, and wobbles past Godzilla and Gorgo. Gorgo says, Since the fall, he ain't been worth shit. And what's with him and the little plastic broads anyway? Don't he know there's real women in the world? Godzilla thinks Gorgo looks at Kong's departing walker-supported ass a little too wistfully. He's sure he sees wetness in Gorgo's eyes. Godzilla blows some scrap to cinders for recreation, but it doesn't do much for him, as he's been blowing fire all day long and has, at best, merely taken the edge off his compulsions. This isn't even as satisfying as the foundry. He goes home. 3. Sex and Destruction That night there's a monster movie on television. The usual one. Big beasts wreaking havoc on city after city, crushing pedestrians underfoot. Godzilla examines the bottom of his right foot, looks at the scar there from stomping cars flat. He remembers how it was to have people squish between his toes. He thinks about all of that and changes the channel. He watches twenty minutes of Mr. Ed turns off the TV, masturbates to the images of burning cities and squashing flesh. Later, deep into the night, he awakens in a cold sweat. He goes to the bathroom and quickly carves crude human figures from bars of soap. He mashes the soap between his toes, closes his eyes, and imagines, tries to remember. 4. Beach Trip and the Big Turtle Saturday, Godzilla goes to the beach. A drunk monster that looks like a big turtle flies by and bumps Godzilla. The turtle calls Godzilla a name, looking for a fight. Godzilla remembers the turtle is called Gamera. Gamera is always trouble. No one likes Gamera. The turtle was a real asshole. Godzilla grits his teeth and holds back the flames. He turns his back and walks along the beach. He mutters a secret mantra given him by his sponsor. The giant turtle follows after, calling him names. Godzilla packs up his beach stuff and goes home. At his back he hears the turtle, still cussing, still pushing. 
It's all he can do not to respond to the big dumb bastard. All he can do. He knows the turtle will be in the news tomorrow. He will have destroyed something, or will have been destroyed himself. Godzilla thinks perhaps he should try and talk to the turtle, get him on the 12-step program. That's what you're supposed to do. Help others. Maybe the turtle could find some peace. But then again, you can only help those who help themselves. Godzilla realizes he cannot save all the monsters of the world. They have to make these decisions for themselves. But he makes a mental note to go armed with leaflets about the 12-step program from now on. Later, he calls in to his sponsor, tells him he's had a bad day, that he wanted to burn buildings and fight the big turtle. Reptilicus tells him it's okay. He's had days like that. We'll have days like that once again. Once a monster, always a monster. But a recovering monster is where it's at. Take it one day at a time. It's the only way to be happy in the world. You can't burn and kill and chew up humans and their creations without paying the price of guilt and multiple artillery wounds. Godzilla thanks Reptilicus and hangs up. He feels better for a while, but deep down he wonders just how much guilt he really harbors. He thinks maybe it's the artillery, and the rocket-firing jets he really hates, not the guilt. 5. Off the Wagon It happens suddenly. He falls off the wagon. Coming back from work, he sees a small doghouse, with a sleeping dog sticking halfway out the doorway. There's no one around. The dog looks old. It's on a chain. Probably miserable, anyway. The water dish is empty. The dog is living a worthless life. Chained. Bored. No water. Godzilla leaps and comes down on the doghouse and squashes dog in all directions. He burns what's left of the doghouse with a blast of his breath. He leaps and spins on tiptoe through the wreckage. Black cinders and cooked dogs slip through his toes and remind him of the old days. He gets away fast. No one has seen him. He feels giddy. He can hardly walk. He's so intoxicated. He calls Reptilicus, gets his answering machine. I'm not in right now. I'm out doing good. But please leave a message and I'll get right back to you. The machine beeps. Godzilla says, Help. 6. His Sponsor The doghouse rolls around in his head all the next day. While at work, he thinks of the dog and the way it burned. He thinks of the little house and the way it crumbled. He thinks of the dance he did in the ruins. The day drags on forever. He thinks maybe when work is through, he might find another doghouse. Another dog. On the way home, he keeps an eye peeled, but no doghouses or dogs are seen. When he gets home, his answering machine light is blinking. It's a message from Reptilicus. Reptilicus' voice says, Call me. Godzilla does. He says, Reptilicus, forgive me, for I have sinned. 7. Disillusioned. Disappointed. Reptilicus' talk doesn't help much. Godzilla shreds all the 12-step program leaflets. He wipes his butt on a couple and throws them out the window. He puts the scraps of the others in the sink and sets them on fire with his breath. He burns a coffee table and a chair, and when he's through, feels bad for it. He knows the landlady will expect him to replace them. He turns on the radio and lies on the bed, listening to an oldies station. After a while, he falls asleep to Martha and the Vandellas singing Heat Wave. 8. Unemployed Godzilla dreams. In it, God comes to him, all scaly and blowing fire. He tells Godzilla he's ashamed of him. He says he should do better. Godzilla awakes, covered in sweat. No one is in the room. Godzilla feels guilty. He has faint memories of waking up and going out to destroy part of the city. He really tied one on, but he can't remember everything he did. Maybe he'll read about it in the papers. He notices he smells like charred lumber and melted plastic. There's gushy stuff between his toes, and something tells him it isn't soap. He wants to kill himself. He goes to look for his gun, but he's too drunk to find it. He passes out on the floor. He dreams of the devil this time. 
He looks just like God, except he has one eyebrow that goes over both eyes. The devil says he's come for Godzilla. Godzilla moans and fights. He dreams he gets up and takes pokes at the devil, blows an effective fire on him. Godzilla rises late the next morning, hungover. He re-remembers the dream. He calls in to work, sick, sleeps off most of the day. That evening he reads about himself in the papers. He really did some damage, smoked a large part of the city. There's a very clear picture of him biting the head off of a woman. He gets a call from the plant manager that night. The manager's seen the paper. He tells Godzilla he's fired. 9. Enticement Next day, some humans show up. They're wearing black suits and white shirts and polished shoes, and they've got badges. They've got guns, too. One of them says, You're a problem. Our government wants to send you back to Japan. They hate me there, says Godzilla. I burned Tokyo down. You haven't done so good here, either. Lucky that was a colored section of town you burned, or we'd be on your ass. As it is, we've got a job proposition for you. What? Godzilla asks. You scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. Then the three men tell him what they have in mind. 10. Choosing Godzilla sleeps badly that night. He gets up and plays the Monster Mash on his little record player. He dances around the room as if he's enjoying himself, but knows he's not. He goes over to the big Monster Recreation Center. He sees Kong there, on a stool, undressing one of his Barbies, fingering the smooth spot between her legs. He sees that Kong has drawn a crack there, like a vagina. It appears to have been drawn with a blue ink pen. He's feathered the central line with ink-drawn pubic hair. Godzilla thinks he should have got someone to do the work for him. It doesn't look all that natural. God, he doesn't want to end up like Kong. Completely spaced. Then again, maybe if he had some dolls he could melt, maybe that would serve to relax him. No, after the real thing, what was a Barbie? Some kind of form of near beer. That's what the debris out back was. Near beer. The foundry. The twelve-step program. All of it. Near beer. 11. Working for the government. Godzilla calls the government assholes. All right, he says. I'll do it. Good, says the government man. We thought you would. Check your mailbox. The map and instructions are there. Godzilla goes outside and looks in his box. There's a manila envelope there. Inside are instructions. They say, burn all the spots you see on the map. You finish those, we'll find others. No penalties, just make sure no one escapes. Any rioting starts, you finish them. To the last man, woman and child. Godzilla unfolds the map. On it are red marks. Above the red marks are listings. Nigger Town. Chink Village. White Trash Enclave. A clutch of queers. Mostly Democrats. Godzilla thinks about what he can do now. Unbidden, he can burn without guilt. He can stomp without guilt. Not only that, they'll send him a check. He has been hired by his adopted country to clean out the bad spots as they see them. 12. The Final Step Godzilla stops near the first place on the list, Nigger Town. He sees kids playing in the streets, dogs, humans looking up at him, wondering what the hell he's doing here. Godzilla suddenly feels something move inside him. He knows he's being used. He turns around and walks away. He heads toward the government section of town. He starts with the governor's mansion. He goes wild. Artillery is brought out, but it's no use. He's rampaging, like the old days. Reptilicus shows up with a megaphone, tries to talk Godzilla down from the top of the great monument building, but Godzilla doesn't listen. He's burning the top of the building off with his breath, moving down, burning some more, moving down, burning some more, all the way to the ground. Kong shows up and cheers him on. Kong drops his walker and crawls along the road on his belly and reaches a building and pulls himself up and starts climbing, 
Bullets spark all around the big ape. Godzilla watches as Kong reaches the summit of the building and clings by one hand and waves the other, which contains a Barbie doll. Kong puts the Barbie doll between his teeth. He reaches in his coat and brings out a naked Ken doll. Godzilla can see that Kong has made Ken some kind of penis out of silly putty or something. The penis is as big as Ken's leg. Kong is yelling. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm ACDC, you sons of bitches. Jets appear and swoop down on Kong. The big ape catches a load of rocket right in the teeth. Barbie, teeth, and brains decorate the graying sky. Kong falls. Gorgo comes out of the crowd and bends over the ape, takes him in her arms and cries. Kong's hand slowly opens, revealing Ken, his penis broken off. The flying turtle shows up and starts trying to steal Godzilla's thunder, but Godzilla isn't having it. He tears the top off the building Kong had mounted and beats Gamera with it. Even the cops and the army cheer over this. Godzilla beats and beats the turtle, splattering turtle meat all over the place, like an overheated poodle in a microwave. A few quick pedestrians gather up chunks of the turtle meat to take home and cook, because the rumor is it tastes just like chicken. Godzilla takes a triple shot of rockets in the chest. Staggers goes down. Tanks gather around him. Godzilla opens his bloody mouth and laughs. He thinks, if I'd have gotten finished here, then I'd have done the black people too. I'd have gotten the yellow people and the white trash and the homosexuals. I'm an equal opportunity destroyer. To hell with the 12-step program. To hell with humanity. Then Godzilla dies and makes a mess on the street. Military men tiptoe around the mess and hold their noses. Later, Gorgo claims Kong's body and leaves. Reptilicus, being interviewed by television reporters, says, Zilla was almost there, man, almost. If he could have completed the program, he'd have been all right. But the pressures of society were too much for him. You can't blame him for what society made of him. On the way home, Reptilicus thinks about all the excitement, the burning buildings, the gunfire, just like the old days when he and Zilla and Kong and that goonball turtle were young. Reptilicus thinks of Kong's defiance, waving the Ken doll, the Barbie in his teeth. He thinks of Godzilla, laughing as he died. Reptilicus finds a lot of old feelings resurfacing. They're hard to fight. He locates a lonesome spot in a dark house and urinates through an open window then goes home. I say every house in America should have an electric chair. And every man just once in his life should sit in it, just so that he can feel the power of millions of gallons of electricity flow through his veins. I got an electric chair, that's all I need. You get an electric chair, Sheldon, you don't have to worry about the audience. You get an electric chair, you can tell them anything you want. As long as it's real. You get yourself an electric chair, and they'll sit there all night long. Kind of a funny idea, sitting in an electric chair and doing a show. Well, think of the therapeutic value of an electric chair. And all the money it is. Yes, sir. An electric chair in every home. The Electric Chair, a show about horror. Electricchairshow.com. Electric Chair. Wow.
Thank you.